I do a quick plug for the office hours call then, seeing as now we're on video. We're live and now we're recording. Wow. <laughs> so hello everyone, welcome to the IPFS weekly call, where we get to see the great things that are being built on top of IPFS. Um, today we have a presentation about Heat Network, but before we begin with our main presentation, Ali has an exciting announcement. Uh, apologies for the people on the call, we've now heard this three times, but IPFS office hours is a thing that happens just before the IPFS weekly call. So you missed it because the IPFS weekly call is happening, but it'll happen again next week. Um, and if you're interested in contributing to IPFS but don't know where to get started, or you're running it in production and you've got some questions, like we're there to help. It's we are available to talk to you. Come chat. Anyway, thank you very much. Awesome. And once again, Ali, thank you for doing this. This is great. All right, so we don't have any more announcements, so we will start. And um, today's presentation is about Keep Network. Keep Network is an off-chain container for uh, private data. And uh, we have Rakab and Piotr here to tell us and talk about uh, Keep Network and how it's using libp 2 p So without further ado, uh, Rakab and Piotr, thank you for being here. And I will turn it over to you so you can present. Thank you. Thank you, Persia. Thank you for inviting us. We are really excited to be here with you. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, awesome. So uh, my name is Piotr, together with Ragap. Uh, we would like to give you a presentation about how do you use libp 2 p in Keep Network. We will first talk about what is Keep and how it works, and then we talk about how do we use libp 2 p So jumping to Keep. Uh, if I had to describe Keep in just one sentence, I would say that Keep is a privacy layer for public blockchains. Over the last few years, public blockchains brought incredible transparency and auditability with immutable and censorship resistant records. However, any smart contract that is published to the blockchain can be easily accessed by competing interests. So when companies consider building applications on blockchain, privacy is one of the primary issues that arise. And Keep is a bridge between public blockchain and private data. So public contracts can harness the full power of blockchain technology without compromising on transparency and privacy. We can also say that Keep is a form of a private computer able to store and compute data hidden even from itself. One of the underlying primitives of Keep Network is the random beacon, which is responsible for providing a trusted randomness source for public blockchains. We can divide Keep Network into two parts. The part that we call on-chain is a set of Ethereum contracts that serve as a kind of an API to our network. The second part that we call off-chain is a connected network of Keep clients, which use special communication protocols to serve requests from the chain. For now, we can focus on random beacon because from the perspective of libp we will use pretty similar mechanisms for all other features of Keep Network. So the way random beacon works is that external client publishes a request to the chain. The request says, please produce a random number for me. Keep clients receive this request from the chain and subset of them, those clients that are in the group, which is the chosen group, cooperate to produce a random number. The way this cooperation protocol is designed does not allow anyone to influence the result. And the result can be later cryptographically proved to be free of manipulation. So keep clients publish the result to the chain and they start another protocol called group selection that will allow them to elect a new group and this new group will be added to group registry. And this group, this new group, may or may not be asked in future to produce a new random number. This is also kind of uh, random, which group is chosen. So if you look at it from off-chain perspective, this part that is connected to the chain, we have a clients connected to each other using clip P2P. Inside this network, clients, form groups, 
one node, one peer can be a member of several groups. Clients, peers communicate inside those groups. Groups are chosen randomly and they have a limited time span. From the perspective of the network, we need the following properties. So clients must be able to efficiently exchange messages inside those groups. Messages must have a very, very high delivery rate inside the group. Some communication in the group has to be public. Some communication has to be kept private between two clients. We require message attributability. So sender must be well-defined and the message must provide sender's attestation. We require integrity of messages. So we need to be able to detect a message was tampered. And we need a peer discovery mechanism that when a new client joins, join, joins the network. Uh, so leave P2P and specifically the PubSub implementation ended up being our ended up being this, uh, decided as the best option for us, um, mainly because client is written in Go, our client is written in Go, and lib 2 p was actively developing Go IPFS and Go lib 2 p suite of libraries. Um, now Raghav will present how exactly it looks under the hood. Right, like so Piotr said, um, when we started this adventure about like a year and a half ago, the options were really lib P2P, uh, Go Ethereum's uh, discovery code that they have, and then rolling your own. And we decided to you know, join lib P2P and IPFS um, because they had quite a bit of traction. And so how we use it in our code is that clients come in with an Ethereum account. These are ECDSA keys. And so we have interfaces between our um, Ethereum code and our lib P2P code. And we take these ECDSA keys and we turn them into the libp2p representation. And then from there, we get our peer ID. And we also use a listen address, we use DHT host, custom transport. So we instantiate all this stuff. And that kicks off our network. That allows the client to connect to the libp2p network. And then going to the next slide, you'll see that um, what we do from here is that clients need to find a bootstrap list. And so like, we'll publish a bunch of bootstrap nodes. Uh, we're a little worried about this because they seem like DOS vectors, um, but we'll publish these nodes. Clients will connect to the bootstrap nodes. One of the things that we need to do is ensure that there's uh, a good diversity of bootstrap nodes that clients can connect to. Also retries and things like that. One of the interesting things that we got to do is that we wrote our own custom transport to hijack a connection before the key client joins uh, the network, the P2P network. What we do here is we get the connection, we check the peer, look to the peer, each other's stake on chain. Then they do a bit of a handshake, like a little bit of a challenge response. And once they've authenticated each other, then they're like, okay, you're good to go, you're good to join the network. So, Piotr mentioned that we have a group selection protocol. In that group selection protocol, clients basically submit tickets on the chain. They're validated. They're like, okay, these tickets are good. This is how many shares you get. And that allows you to join the PubSub channel. And so basically the PubSub channel is just like a, you know, a randomized word. It's just a hash of all the clients. And they join this channel. And um, every group, is its own PubSub channel. This is a topic in Go with PDV PubSub, so we just like formed that topic. Um, and we currently use FloodSub. We've played around with Gossip Sub, but we want to initially go with FloodSub so that there's a good, you know, diversity of messages hitting all the peers. And if we see that EpiSub or Gossip Sub are better for a use case in the future, we'll move to that. So sending a message and these the next few slides are a little bit out of date because we updated libp2p to take advantage of the strict signing and verification uh, so what we do is we just you know we get this protocol message whatever protocol the clients are executing so there could be dkg or relay signing and what we do is we marshal the specific protocol message we like register some handlers um, and then we just send it we just call publish we no longer have our internal signing code, we just gutted all that out and we're relying on the P2P for uh, signing the message and verifying it. And so this is what the message layer looks like. Again, we use protobuf. Um, you'll see the lib P2P uh, pub sub message and then you can just ignore the network envelope because we removed all that and now it's as simple as the network message itself. 
Right. And so for receiving a message, we basically call next, which is a method that the PubSub interface exposes. And every message is basically treated like an HTTP request. We're like, okay, this is a new Go routine, process that message, and then call the correct handler to send it to the correct uh, protocol to execute. Right, and so we also wrote a little bit of custom code, for example, handling the different key types, but again, we primarily focus on ECDSA um, and ensure that they're interoperable with each other. Uh, and we have some custom handling code as well. Right, so things that we need to do or that we could use. So one of the things is that we need deep connection management. I believe this is going to be possible with the connection manager, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the reason we need this is to disconnect clients that fall below the staking threshold. Also, if we need to disqualify peers a given round of the protocol. So we need something that can let us like ban connections or cut them or you know, serve them for some period of time. Uh, we need more resilient bootstrap as mentioned mm -hmm. before. So that's to ensure that we get a good diversity of bootstrap peers. Uh, and then we need to have a retrier. Um, there's a few options here. We could have something as simple as just like retrying code or something a little bit more complicated like what HashiCorp implements in Swim. Uh, and the last thing is this rework validation pipeline in GoLib P2B PubSub. So currently we're anchored to a commit that is in PR review. This is because after updating to strict, uh, to enabling signing within GoLib P2P PubSub, uh, we noticed that some of us could run our end-to-end -end, uh, code, uh, our experiments, and some of us couldn't. And we noticed that once we enabled signing, messages had a higher frequency of dropping for some folks on our team. And we finally realized that it's because validation was happening inline, and this commit right here um, splits it up into synchronous and asynchronous validation, uh, which allows messages to be processed. So expensive things get pushed off async, uh, and then basic structural checks happen in line. And it would be great to get that merged in ASAP so that we can be back on master. Yeah, so thanks, that's our implementation. Hopefully that was uh, good enough information. Awesome, thank you very much. Do you mind? Um, awesome, great. Thank you very much. That was great. Okay. Um, next is Q&A. So if anyone has a question, if they could put it in a chat, that would be wonderful. So are there any questions regarding um, network and lib P2P implementation? Um, I have one question. Could you tell us on like a higher level, um, who is using like the keep network? Like when they're building a smart contract and they need to keep network and they need to have a public contract, but a private container of data, like what are the use cases that you're seeing initially? Um, so we're going to be launching our private test net pretty soon here. So we haven't launched yet. Uh, but the folks that we're looking to work with are <laughs> folks like, who need who need these private containers. So like, you know, Aragon or a few folks like that are pretty interested in these use cases. Uh, folks that need decentralized custodial solutions would be very interested in this um, in this technology. Uh, one of the keeps that we're looking at, and Piotr has given a few talks on this that you guys can find online, uh, are TECDSA keeps, threshold ECDSA keeps. That's going to be our first type. And we're actually building our first product in that, um, which we'll, you know, we'll, we'll announce more on that later. So anybody who needs a decentralized custodial solution, anybody who needs private containers for data, that could be interesting to mask some information from some period of time. But initially, we're just focused on TEC DSA keeps. So anybody that has a private uh, EC DSA keep that needs to be remote controlled or kept securely on Ethereum. And anyone who needs randomness on public blockchain, which is actually right now not very possible, Keep Network make, makes it available. Excellent, thank you. Do we have any other questions?
Okay. Nope. All right. Um, if we don't have any other questions, then I thank you very much for presenting. We can leave it here. We can end here. Um, everyone, you get about 13 minutes back. And I will see everyone else at the next IPFS weekly meeting. So once again, thank you very much for presenting. Thanks, Portia. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.